Hello everybody, Debbie here, and uh, this design was inspired by a recent design I just did called Troika. There were some aspects of it I really liked and I wanted to try to um, expand upon it in the design and came up with this beauty. I love it. It is six, I mean seven pins across. It's exact like this. I have a little bit less than six inch wrist, so it is a very tight weave, so you might, some of you regular size people, at least I'm regular size, I just have scrawny wrists. Normal wrists will probably want to make it a little longer than two full looms lengths, which is what I'm going to be doing here. And I showed it to my husband and he totally fell in love with it and he said, you know, Reminded me of, he goes, reminds me of that, you know that candy we have at Christmas time? I go, you know, ribbon candy? He goes, yeah. You know, like cinnamon flavored everything. I go, well, what should we name it? And we both at the same time go, cinnamon ribbon. <laughs> so cinnamon ribbon it is. And as you know, I usually um, refer to my colors by position A, B, C, D, and E as far as where they're placed. So I did use five colors here. So position A. Our color A is going to be along the border, up these two, and here. And I'm going to be using the, um, I forget, per, these are the Pearl Right, the 300 count two tone, the black and white. Now, I haven't tried this color, these, this color combination in a trial run. I just kind of gave up on not liking what I did, so I'm winging it. So that is color A. Color B in here are the um, the Penguin 600 count, and I will be using the black color of the Hippie Mix 600 count. Color C, which I use the LE Mint Green, I'm going to be using you know different um, colors of the the LE Marble. So I've, I've got here is I just picked out six of them, and so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six as I go up. As I go up here, instead of being solid color, it's going to be alternating colors. And then color D here, which I use the the uh, LE mint green, and it's the white frost color. So I'll again be using the LE. Oh, marble. Okay. And then that's D. And then the final color position in this one, which is a zebra 600 count, I again will be using the Hippie Mix Black in the 600. Okay. So I think that's all I need to tell you before you get going. We've got this. So, of course, we're going to start out with the A color. Place the closing band here. And we are just going to do the bottom, the bottom border. And then we are going to take rows, our columns, the third. And the fifth, these these two right here, where the sweets burgundy are, and go all the way up demonstration sake I'm not going to wait and get the whole loom done I'll just do you know get the placement of all the bands and then I'll go back and work on it finish all my placement and then I'll come back so definitely want to push all these down Oh, also, also, the center pin, make sure 
you do the big old stretch test, okay? I think it's the only one. Um, make sure these don't aren't going to snap on you because up the center they will be stretched. Um, the ones going here, the um, penguin and the zebra, they require some stretching as in the Troika design. Not extreme, but you just you don't want real super snappy non stretchy bands for those. I think everything else isn't really requiring a lot of stress on the bands. So remember that. Especially up the center, make sure you know, do a test run that they aren't going to snap on you. Okay, so what you do is you're gonna run these all the way up to the end and this pin right here the second to the last in the center, that will be your cap bit. That's where the you know end cap. Oh, my battery's dying. So I gotta pay attention. So if I just all of a sudden cut off the middle mid-sentence, I'm changing my battery because I lost track. I just don't want to do it right now. But it just went from like halfway charge to quarter charge. <laughs> okay, so we pretend these I did all the way up columns three and five. And now we're going to take the um, C color band, the C position, and doing triangles on each side. So again, I'm going to pretend that we just we we do it up. almost to the end. Okay, so if this was the you know, the end of your loom, you're going to have one more here and one more here. And this is where you're going to end this one, okay? There's no need to place a final final B position um, band there because it's just it just kind of looks stupid and I want just kind of cutting those out of my finish, first finished design and you know, it was fine. So no big deal if you go to the end, but it's not necessary. It just kind of looks funky at the end. So pretend we did all that. Then we do these to mirror image the ones we just did. Again, go all the way up to before the very last band on columns three and five. So of course, since I'm doing this quickly, you can just pause and, you know, get yours. It looks like, you know, that's what the end of your loom looks like. Okay. Next, you're going to take, oh, the, what is the C color and position, and we are going to go up rows two and six and do this. And this one you do want to go let me see, I don't remember now. Do they go all the way? Yeah, I do do believe. We can just take it off. So if this is the end of your loom. This will be the final pin on this row, okay? So I'm going to do the same color matching. I might change these two around, I don't know, because they're so close to cut together. Oops, what I did. That one. Oops. 
I mixed something up. Oh well, I'll figure it out later. <laughs> okay, so now I have to do the triangle part. Don't want to forget that. Okay. So according to my notes, this is what the the end of your loom looks like. Okay. This pin will be empty and this is the cap will be coming down here. Okay. Push all that down. And once all these are placed, then we are going to go up the center, the D position. And this is, remember, make sure you grab the stretchy one. So stretch it out. Make sure it doesn't snap. And you can use one color, two colors, you know. It doesn't have to be. I'm just, <coughs> excuse me, trying this out. It's okay if they're like, you kind of make them a little bit loose because they will be stretched. Okay, so this one here, your last band in the center column will look like this. Okay, so it'll be that's how the end of your loom is going to look. So this right here is going to come one short of this final pin. Okay. So we've got those. Now we're going to do the E position band, which again I'm using the Hippie Mix 600 count. And you'll be doing this all the way up until not quite the last one. <laughs> so see if this is your last band on uh, column two and this is like the end, you know, the last pin at the end of the loom, you'll only be going to this one. Okay, so this pin will stay empty. Okay. And no worries, um, you know, when I come back with it all placed, you can just double check and rearrange those last bands if you, you know, have one where you shouldn't. No big deal, no need to worry. I got you covered. Into your should look. Okay, so you'll have one, two, three empty pins. And then finally, we will place the border. I'm just going to pretend I'm at the end of my loom so I show you what it looks like. So you're going to go up to here. Then you're going to go up to here. Then down. Whoops, wrong one. And down. And then down to this one. Okay, I'm going to try to get this other side down before my battery dies and I'll change it while I'm finishing placing all my bands. So if you're already done Troika, which I haven't even post published yet, but um, I'm probably going to do that tonight or tomorrow because I've got the tutorial done and I've got it edited. If you've already made that one, this design should be familiar to you, at least what I do on it. It should have some familiar familiarity. 
<laughs> so now you're going to go in and up and then down to the center. Remember, I'm pretending I've already done all of this and I'll just correct it when I'm off camera. And then you will cap this in that is the loom band placement. And if I went a little fast, I guess just rewind and go over it, but you know, it's pretty... I don't think I flubbed up too much in my explanation. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Alrighty. Um, since uh, this is so short, even, you know, for my wrist, I decided to break out the two um, extra loom sets that I was so graciously given, so thankful by, um, can't read, can you read that? Ah, let me, AZMS Mom, Deborah, in our loom swap club, whatever we have, group we have, um, she got my name, and she knew I needed um, extra of these, and they were out of stock for quite a while. They, I saw their um, rainbowloom.com has them again, but they were out of stock for a while, and so she sent me two whole kits instead. So, I did an extra, let me see, where does that other one end? So. I went just a little bit more. I have about six sections, six or seven sections um, longer, so I think that should make it just right. So I'm going to add a clasp or and the jump rings and clasp and everything to finish it off. It'll just be right. Just hope it doesn't fall off the end of my little deal. Okay, so I have it all capped. I just, you know, when I showed you it all finished down there, I just relocated the end to here. Okay. We will start by looming out the um, bottom bands. Yeah, this first see after I do this, the first sequence um, on this design is exactly like the Traca design, which is why I'm doing it. It's because I liked the effect so much. I wanted to see if I could play around and make it work in other designs. Okay, explain this one. We are also going to do this one. I can get them twist, but fortunately they they come, you know, a little playing around once you get it off the loom. All these um, dual colored bands do snap back into place with relative ease. So what we're going for is the tip of this little triangle. The what was the E7 placement or the E placement band? I think it was like the seventh step, so twice E7. So we reach under the cap band, I mean under the border band, the top band, reach, grab at the tip of this, and stretch it over its two base pins. And we are going to do that up all the way up the sides. Probably not going to go all the way up. I'm going to pretend I just finished all this, finished all of it, so that I can demonstrate all the steps. All right, hand doesn't want to work today. But now my left hand's getting cramped from being used, too much, so we're going to switch in a second. Keep it 
even. The only problem with only doing it part way is making sure when I go back to finish it, I don't miss any of the steps. Leave a band unloomed. We all know what happens with that. Okay, get it to that spot. Okay, so you're just going to do it all the way up to this last one, and I'll finish those off later. It's really hard to work with three loom lengths. It's one long loom. I kind of I I've suggested this to Rainbow Loom, and I don't know if it's practical, but I always thought having like one, you know, if these three were like all one base, or maybe make it a couple extra wide, so that it didn't have a tendency to fall off. But I guess it's not too bad. But anyhow, sidetrack um, conversation. So now we've got all of these done. Let's see which one I do. One, two. Okay. Then we're going to do the same with these middle triangles. We're going to reach underneath these top bands. And you can either go up, you know, do this side and then that side. Reach underneath that top band. Or you can just go up one side and then the other. It doesn't really matter. Doing all of one side and all the other doesn't affect the design, so. So I'm pretending I just went all the way up to the last band at that end. And camera too so we're pretending that's the end of the loop because it's just the same you know the same step over and over again until you're done as you know okay now once all those little triangles are you know taken back to their home pins the next step is we're going to board do the border so since these have been a little distorted by that um, first step, that right here is what you're going to loom up. And just be a little careful because it is already stretched a little more. Let's see how easy it's right there. Okay, and then we're going to do it on this side. Pretending that I finished all the way up because I'm so fast. <laughs> so, you know, obviously you'll have to stop and... I'm not going to do that one. Yes, I am. Okay. So I've done both sides all the way up just to, um, just go up to this pin, okay? Don't do the top. We'll, we'll save that top border like from here to the center. Wait, don't do this one. Just wait for that last. Just go up to this pin, okay? On both sides. Next. Let's see what four, eight, five. Okay, the next thing we're going to do um, you know, the, these right here we're just going to reach underneath and this is simple single chain up up the loom decided like do all the um, bands that have the least pressure and save the last the ones with the most pressure for last so that they're not sitting there all stretched out on the loom for too long. Risk being overstressed and broken. We don't want a broken band. We do not like broken bands. So, and you're going to do both these columns all the way to the end of your loom. And just 
just be prepared if you do use these dual, you know, colored bands. There is um, a fair amount of straightening up, but yeah, you can just do that while you're watching your favorite program. And it barely, barely notice it, and it's. I think it's worth it at the end. Okay, I don't want to go any further than that. That's okay. So we pretended I did those two columns all the way. This isn't really all that hard. Next, the these that we did the triangle here, we're just going to take this part of it and straight up. It's kind of like doing a single chain, but we're just leaving this part of the top part, part uh, top part of the triangle as is. I played around with how to do this one band, and this works the best, I think. It's got the results I desired. Did it, did it. So go all the way up to the last band on columns two and six. So just reach under, grab a tip, bring it straight up. Come on. here a little bit. Sorry about that, but that's just continuing. So pretend we did all that to the end of the loom. And then the second to the final step, you know, the last step, of course, is finishing the border at the top, is now we're going to loom these center ones up because those haven't actually, they've been stretched out, but they haven't been loomed. They probably stick together, but they probably look funky. So anyway, you're going to take this one and bring it over this one bring it over, and always the one closest. This is not, you don't want to do that, this one right here. No, 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 you want this one right here. So just do it carefully because, you know, they're fairly stretched. So again, you're going to pretend that I just did this to the end. So you work on all those, and then I'll come back and, you know, finish the border at the top and we'll take it off and see what this big boy looks like or big girl I don't know Let's see okay I'm back and I know it looks a little different um, spent the last couple hours I took it all apart and played around with the colors I did not like the little um, hippie black and white polka dotted um, bands so I switched to white and so now all we have to do, uh -oh. oh, here it is, is take these last border bands, and I reuse these, and they're kind of the black and whites are kind of loose and sloppy, but hopefully overnight they'll they'll tighten and look nice and neat. Okay. Somebody's TV's in the background. But hopefully you don't hear that too much. And my husband talking baby talk <laughs> to our dog. He is so in love with that dog. He even tries to treat credit for finding him. I'm the one who looked online, saw him at the local pet shop, um, pet shelter, animal shelter. Okay. off and see what we've got. And as you saw, I made it about seven sections longer as on that third um, loom length. Okay, so I've got a couple of straightened up. I think that looks really nice. Let me show you real quick. See? So those with larger wrists will probably want to use three full loom lengths, but the two and a half, let's see. So this will look much nicer once I get it all evened out and has overnight to um, get over the shock treatment of being too stretched. But I do like this. I really like it with the white. 
Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check me out on Instagram at Deb's Thing. Feel free to uh, follow me there. And of course, if you would like to subscribe here on YouTube, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Thank you so very much for watching.